What's up guys? It's one of those days today where you could just stay curled up in bed with a book or you could put on the rain jacket and come out into the rainforest. So I'll show you why I really like coming out on days like today. Alright, here we are. One of the uh, streams here. This is exactly what I like to look for. Not just me, but probably any photographer that's come out into the forest. A nice cascade flowing through. You can find cascades, but maybe the vegetation either side is too messy. This particular spot here I've been to before, just not with enough rainfall. And yeah, we've got a nice combination of trees and ferns, particularly around the corner up here. So we'll, we'll pop up there and have a look. This is not the stream that I originally wanted to get to. This is just a little bonus one, but we'll definitely try and make an image here. And then we'll continue further to a larger stream, which I'm hoping will uh, be flowing just as well, which I'm sure it will be. So one of the challenges is having the stream, but maybe the surrounding area is just too messy or too narrow. Like down here, for example, that, that area gets very narrow, so it probably won't look good through the lens. It can uh, get messy very quickly, so it's just trying to find that right combination. The best thing to use the creek for is a way to lead the eye. It becomes a main subject matter in itself, but utilizing it as a, a way to channel the eye, it's a linear perspective. You're gonna have that wider part of the creek in the front of the frame if you're using a wide angle and then it will taper in and that just leads the eye beautifully through the environment and then just getting that right combination of trees and ferns all the way around i'm always looking for the white cascades that's what gives you that beautiful texture when you're doing a slow shutter i don't like to be too slow on the shutter speed because we lose that texture depends on the speed of the stream but anywhere from one tenth one eighth one quarter of a second let's have a look up here so you might have to focus stack that front one and wait for the rain to not hit it because every time it hits it it shakes it it's going to come out blurry got to check it sharp zoom in so i've got this beautiful little garden here on the right these ferns coming out and that's great because that's just filling that right hand side of the frame where there's not much else going on on the left we've got that other fern perched on the rocks and then it's just created a beautiful opening through the center with that tree above pretty much can't go wrong to be honest the main challenge we're facing now is obviously there's actually rain hitting these foreground ferns and moving them so worst case, we'll do a separate exposure for those at a faster shutter speed, maybe a 20th of a second potentially, and then the rest of the scene we're shooting around one eighth, even one quarter, to really get that slow shutter. Then using a narrow aperture, F9, to get the image sharp. If we get really close to those front ferns, we have to uh, focus stack, which is not a big deal. Some of the frames that I'll do, I might try focus stack those as well. So focus stacking, faster shutter speed for the foreground, Focusing in the background, slower shutter speed. You just have to put it together in post. It's doing a quarter of a second now at f11, trying to get this sharp in a single frame just to avoid the focus stack. That's the one. That works. Just trying to time that when the, uh, the rain drops off. Streams like this only exist on these types of days, so just getting amongst the elements is all part of it. All right, move on to the next part. See what else, see what else we find. When you're walking through the forest like this, you'll hear water off in the distance, rivers and different creeks, and uh, just about taking your time and exploring, and you never know what you find, and that's how for me, over the years, I've managed to find some of my favorite little locations. Just let that curiosity lead the way and returning in different conditions. Good. 
Perfect. No wind either, so the, the ferns are not moving. Ow! tuning this composition here I love this little natural opening we've got and just looking at that through the lens just all in the subtle details here I don't want to overemphasize these dark ferns at the front just because they've got that very subtle lumen luminosity on them I'm gonna tuck this guy and also look at this one it's broken off on the edge if I get that too obvious in the front, it's just going to drive me crazy. So I'm going to tuck that behind that guy just to cover him up there. Now they're moving slightly, so obviously wait for that. It's quite bright now and the rain has stopped, so that's one blessing. I'm at ISO 200 F14 for that massive depth of field and one sixth of a second, which is giving us a beautiful texture. We're just going to wait for that breeze to go away. The odd raindrop hitting the leaves, but it's not too bad. Just got to really make sure that we just line everything up nicely here. And don't want to have the eye get distracted and pulled away to the edges. But in really utilizing the curve of these ferns here, the plants on the left, and then just running the eye through the center. This is where the 12 mil is absolute gold. Heading upstream now. You can see where the creek kind of converges around the corner here. Woo! Wow, look at this. These crown ferns all have their new fronds coming out as well, so it's a really good time. Wow. Doesn't get much better than that. That composition just speaks for itself. Got the arching tree on the right and left. Oh man, look at that. So we just come back a little bit and got some height and now I can fit, look at that frame. Oh, just enough perspective here to show those fresh shoots, those fresh fronds and then the tree frame either side. To me, this is just, all the elements here being out in this, this is the pinnacle. Absolutely love it. Look at that, like a fairy tale. All right, let's, uh, let's try to get this image here, make sure we do a good job. Getting a few bugs on the lens. So I'm at ISO 200 just because it's obviously a little bit dark in here and I'm using F13 for the depth of field and one sixth of a second. Yes, 1.6 handheld, it's fine. It's tack sharp, guys. Just got to be steady. Then on a mirrorless, you can do it. People always seem to be uh, flustered and in disbelief when I do a one, uh, you know, a shutter speed that slow handheld, but you can definitely do it, even with one hand. Look at that frame. Woo! It's so nice when the rain subsides too. It's the perfect timing. And then all these fresh fronds coming out. Have a look further upstream. A lot of these forest scenes can be so close to being great, but then there's just a few things wrong with them. Could be a little bit messy, might not be enough water flow, whatever it is, or it might just be lacking that right vegetation. So when you do finally find everything that comes together like we have so far today, it's highly rewarding. Once this uh, 12 mil gets dirty, a little bit wet, man, it's hard to clean off. It just smears on there. Well, 
When I'm in a, a uh, precarious position, I definitely use the screen to help compose the scene. I'll often hold it out like this and just move around to help find that composition because there's no way I can move forward and get the shot with the camera to my face. And you can imagine if you're on a tripod, you would absolutely struggle here. So this is, these are the type of environments and moments that have led me to shooting exclusively handheld for five years now. Just being able to line up that composition makes life a lot easier. Look at that arch, look at that beautiful arching branch with these crown ferns and the fresh fronds. Wow. This is why the 12 mil is such a good lens for these environments. Pretty much saturated three of my towels now that was the third and final that was a really enjoyable time just switching off and being in the moment and i definitely believe i got a couple of images there to hang on to